We can all do better. Reconciliation, there we go. That's it. Thank you so much. Well, that was the scene last night when Jeremy Dutcher accepted the Juno Award for Indigenous Album of the Year. He got cut off during a speech in which he criticized Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and spoke passionately about reconciliation. Now, that said, it did not end there. Our Tashana Reid is in London, Ontario, with more on this. And, you know, we, we should point out you're in London because that is where the big show for the Junos will be tonight. It's been Juno weekend there. But what happened last night? What happened after that moment with Jeremy Dutcher? Right, Michael. Well, this was at the gala awards and dinner. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the awards are actually given out the night before. So we saw about 36 uh, music awards handed out at that dinner. Jeremy Dutcher winning one of those Junos for, as you mentioned, Indigenous Album of the Year. It was a big moment for him. Of course, this is the same album uh, that landed him the Polaris Prize last year and a really special moment. And when he went up and he took the mic, he really wanted to speak about the importance of reconciliation in this country also uh, how things are going. He mentioned pipelines and he also called out the Prime Minister as well. But uh, what ended up happening was that the music started to play and he did get cut off because each speech has a specific amount of time. And so what we did see was when the Arkells won for Best Rock Album, uh, they took a moment to share the stage with Jeremy Dutcher. Take a look at what happened. This means so much to me. I hope to continue to share and use this platform to tell truth. We can all do better. Reconciliation, there we go. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, there's been so much wisdom shared on the stage tonight, but uh, our friend Jeremy didn't get a chance to finish. So he's gonna finish the night as he should. Jeremy, come on, let's go. Hey, go. Get in there. And don't cut off the don't start the music. He's gonna go as long as he wants, okay? This is what giving space holds like. This is what holding space looks like. Thank you. To my manager, I'm sorry, I have joined the Arkells. I will not be... <laughs> they just have, they have a better rider. And um, it's an honor to be the sixth member? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, Reconciliation. Reconciliation. It's a lofty goal. It's a dream. And it doesn't happen in a year. It takes time. It takes stories. It takes shared experience. It takes music. I have hope. I have to, that we can come to right relations with each other, you know? And if at least we're not in the same book, at least we're on the same page. I, at least if we're not on the same page, or at least we're in the same book. I should get my anecdotes right. I just want to say this. Little edge. Thank you. I was backstage in the media room and I must say Jeremy Dutcher uh, took a moment to really talk with the reporters and speak about the platform that he has as an Indigenous artist and how important it is for him uh, to share the music and to also shed light on all of the communities. It was a special moment last night and uh, you know the Arkells said that they were just happy that they, they probably wouldn't have been able to say what he was uh, able to bring to the, the table last night. Hey, Hayden Waters with CBC News. Uh, I'm just wondering how the moment with Jeremy came about. Uh, did you spot him in the audience, or how did that uh, come about? Uh, well, his, his speech, his first speech was amazing. And I think every artist will tell you, it's like, if I win, what profound thing could I say? And then there's about six or seven other artists that came before us that said way more profound things that I could ever think of. And Jeremy's really stuck out, and he also got cut off. So I was going to the bathroom to take a piss and I ran into him in the hallway and he didn't know me from a hole in the wall, a hole in the wall but I was like what table are you at 
he said, 73. And, then I, and so I looked for 73, and then when our name was called, I, I found him, and I just grabbed him. I think he was a little startled. <laughs> but uh, he is a true performer, an incredible speaker. And, uh, and like, the way the room quieted, um, it was total silence when he was speaking. It was, it was an incredible thing to be a part of. And, yeah, he, he said something that, uh, you know, we could only uh, dream of of relaying that message. He, he, was, he was incredible. I feel an immense sense of responsibility to do this work um, and to have a spotlight and a platform uh, to share truths and to talk about the difficult dream we have in this country of actually working together. Um, I hope to make that a reality, but I think we need to be on the same page first. And so there's some things that we need to sort out. So I hope to step into that role as a truth teller um, to um, share music because I feel like actually it's in beauty that we move forward. You know, we can sit and we can, we can, we can uh, hold signs and, and shake fingers and, and this is important. It's important to take space. But when we change hearts, it comes in beauty. And so for me, uh, I take the responsibility of being a conveyor of beauty very seriously. And I'll just quickly follow that up with uh, what you would say to other artists in the indigenous music space that are you know, trying to break through the way that you have in the last year. You're all beautiful. What you do is magic. What you do is magic, truly. And I think what's kind of funny about this award that I just won and kind of beautiful at the same time is that the diversity, sonic diversity, of the uh, nominees in this category? Are you kidding me? You know, it's amazing the kinds of music that our community puts out. Communities. We must acknowledge that every single one of those nominees comes from a different tradition, has a different language. And so all of our artistic practice is coming through that, through the land and through the language which we come from. So. Um, what I say to them is create with confidence at the intersections that you inhabit. Because those intersections, this is what this country needs to hear right now. That's what I would say. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, David, uh, front row, please, Fanny. Thank you. Hi, David. Hi, Jeremy. How's How are going? you? Good, you? It's nice to see you. I saw you tweeting the other day. I do it a lot. Yeah, you're here. So I have, I have a question for What's you. Um, this award, congratulations, could have been given out on the broadcast tomorrow night. Really? Could it have? You're, <laughs> you're performing tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, true. I was wondering what your thoughts are on the fact that it isn't being given out then. Obviously, you've previously spoken about the fact that the Indigenous performers are specifically within one category and still haven't broken out. What, what do you think about the bigger picture there? What I said on that stage was that our music is not niche and our music is viable. And so, thank you, crowd of one, represent. Um, <laughs> what I will say is that um, our music does deserve to be on these stages and seen because it hasn't been seen for a very long time, you know? Up until 1951, we weren't even able to gather and share our music. It was illegal under the Indian Act. And so, just in a little over 50 years, where are we now? You know, representation is very important. And this category is very important. You know, I have to shout out people like Elaine Bomberry, Shin Goose, Buffy St. Marie, who advocated for this category in the mid-90s. And if they hadn't, how many indigenous nominees would there be at the Junos? You know? Um, we do a lot of this back padding for our diversity points, you know? Um, but who are we giving the space to? Who's taking up the airwaves? 